Hey YouTube fans, YouTube friends, uh, I'm going to do another video and uh, <coughs> this one's still on the, on the HVAC. What we're going to be talking about today is uh, how to diagnose your furnace um, and, and the different types of furnaces, okay? Um, there are different types of ignition systems. When you go down to your furnace nowadays, typically there's going to be a red flashing light somewhere that's going to flash, you know, one long, two long, three long, or one long and three shorts, or whatever. And when you see that, that is a diagnostic, diagnostic code that you should be able to look inside of your furnace panel cover somewhere. You take one of the doors off and try to find the, the, the LED status code. That's what it's going to be, LED which is light emitting diode status code. Okay? And it'll you'll have to watch it. It'll repeat if it goes 1 2 3, then there'll be a pause. 1 2 3 or it could be one long, be 1 2 3 4. 1 2 3 4, something like that. That's kind of how to read read those uh, codes. Okay? Now, depending on what that status code is, <coughs> um, you may or may not know where to look. Let's let's talk about the different types of ignition systems. There is uh, there's a standing pilot. Okay, standing pilot is basically where you have to push a button down on the gas valve somewhere. You push this button down, and then you light the pilot flame. And the pilot is going to shoot out of a hood and, and, then, uh, and then run on a thermocouple, okay? This thermocouple will get heated up, and, and it goes back, screws into your gas valve, and it's, uh, it produces millivolts, and that will hold the coil open. So if you push this down and hold it for 60 seconds, light the, push it and hold it, light the pilot and let that run for 60 seconds and slowly let off. If it stays, then you're pretty much done. Then you turn the valve to the on position and your furnace is up and running. Okay, that's one, that's, that's, that's the old style. Then they went to spark ignition. Spark ignition is similar to this, but it has, <clears throat> instead of a thermocouple, it has a spark rod and then a flame sensor. Okay? So what, the way this works is, is the, uh, there's going to be an ignition module, and it's going to have a spark plug. Typically, there's like two wires that come to it. And that's that 24 volts again. Okay. Um, and that runs over here and creates a spark between here. Let's make it look like a lightning bolt. <laughs> Makes it a little spark right there. Lights the pilot and then encompasses that uh, tip of the spark rod. And that goes down to... A flame rectification. Now it, it could be all in one module, and it goes into that, into there, and it, it basically applies power. Tick, tick, tick. Poof! Lights the pilot, and it senses pilot by sending voltage out on the the rod, and then electricity or or the power is allowed to transfer the through the flame back to ground, and it measures that. <coughs> uh, and when the when the board realizes or recognizes that there is pilot there um, and uh, then it continues to run and it allows the, the gas valve to open. So we have a GV, a PV and a, a 24 volt so it turns a common. So here's your gas valve just like before. You got a tube coming out to the bottom of here and then you got your main burners and a knob once that happens, it sends power up, turns the gas valve on. So, okay, that's spark ignition. 
<clears throat> and the newest style that they have is the uh, HSI, or Hot Surface Ignition. Hot Surface Ignition also uses a control module. And when you get a call for heat on W, remember, call for heat on W, then the hot surface ignition will then send power to one of several different looking style electrodes. It may look like this, and it also could look like this. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a few others, but that's pretty much the most common of the two. Um, th there are some that are a fl just a, a, a flat card, kind of looks like a bar like that. But anyway, this area will glow red hot, and it's located in front of the manifold somewhere. And just like <laughs> the flame rectification on the flame sensor, these have a flame sensor too. Let me see if I can draw the, uh, the uh, I'm going to draw a set of burners here. You're looking at a top view of, of some burners. I'm going to make it four burners, okay? Pardon the artwork. Okay, now you have a manifold, which is a, just a gas pipe with a little orifice stuck in it. It blows gas into that burner so that when it lights, flames will come here, and then it'll, it'll you have a little bit of flame here because this is the transfer bar. This one will light. A little bit of flame here, it transfers. This one will light. A little bit of flame here, and this one will light. And one of this, <coughs> again, depending on which type of unit you have, what you'll have is one of these located within the flame, typically here, okay? So that when your gas comes on, it sends gas in here, and it goes in all the burners, and it should light. Poof, lights all the way across. There should be a flame sensor in the very last burner. This could be reversed. It could light from left to right. It could write light from right to left. But if uh, um, in your sequence of operation on this one, what you're looking at is an inducer, inducer motor comes on, and that's a little pre-fan that gets all the air going in the right direction. And then the pressure switch pulls in. You might hear that as a little click. After the pressure switch kicks in, then you'll see the glow bar ignite. It'll glow red hot. It might be 20, 30 seconds. Then the gas valve, you'll hear another click. You'll hear a hiss. You should see all this light, and it should make it all the way over to here. And within about five seconds, <coughs> the glow bar should shut off, and it should stay running. If for any reason it lights and then it shuts off because and, and shuts off, it's because this flame sensor didn't recognize that it lit. One of the most common issues with this type of system is that that flame sensor gets a coating on it. It's real simple to um, take the screw out, pull that thing out, sand it off with a little bit of emery cloth, Put it back in, I must say this, turn the power off first, because it does have electricity, That's that'll sit and hold electricity. Um, you don't want to uh, have the power on while you're trying to service anything. Okay, so you turn the power off, pull that out, sand it off, put it back in, you should be good. That's one of the most common issues here. Um, so let's see, okay, when pressure switch kicks in. Uh, gas valve, oh excuse me, not the gas valve yet, igniter, we're going to say HSI, ignites, then the gas valve, and then <coughs> pilot uh, flame sensor. Um, and then normal operation after that. 
if, if you know what the sequence of operation is, this little bit right here, that will help you determine what the problem is. If any one of these don't, don't happen, you know that there's a problem there or back, and the rest of it's fine. Um, okay, well, anyway, that's, that's pretty much an overview of the, of the different types. You've got standing pilot, spark ignition, and HSI. Um, there was a, uh, there was a, a, genera a generation that probably nobody has anymore previous to the um, standing pilot, and that was uh, called a generator. And that's back before people had electricity and they were using um, coal conversion units. Uh, they, they, these old octopus furnaces had, and they burnt coal. Well, then they converted them to gas, but there was still no power in a lot of these houses. So they had a thing called a generator. And it was almost like the standing pilot, except for the generator was a card. And it had two wires on it, and it went back and wired in series. And this pretty much, um, this can, this can uh, made millivolts, and the whole entire secondary system, rather than being 24 volts, was millivolt. Okay, so I doubt anybody has this generator card style anymore. Uh, I, I believe it was uh, 750 millivolts at one point or another. That's back when you seen <clears throat> when people still had, when they had gas lights. So um, anyway, that was a long time ago. You shouldn't see that anymore. Standing pilot, uh, you might still have some of them around, especially in a water heater. Water heaters have standing pilots. Um, this is this one and this one are the most common. Uh, today. All right, hope this helps. If anybody has any questions, again, shoot me a question and I'll try to uh, zero in on any part of this uh, with a video uh, to get your questions answered. Uh, thanks a lot and we'll see you guys on the next video, video, no video number 11. Thanks and have a great day.